There's a new election conspiracy being spread throughout the right wing, and it just got a massive boost thanks to billionaire man baby Elon Musk. So he was replying to a tweet from End Wokeness, the seemingly Russian bot on Twitter that tries to turn Americans against each other. They posted a tweet talking about the number of voters registering without a photo ID skyrocketing in three key swing states. Holy S, this is very concerning. And to that, Elon Musk says, extremely concerning. See, he agreed with me. Now look, is he being potentially sarcastic there? One would hope that the idea that he could still be posting extremely concerning to everything a right wing grifter says in the serious fashion seems hard to imagine. But he loves spreading election conspiracy theories. And could he potentially be taking a break from spreading the great replacement theory? 100%. Here is the issue. When you dig into it, even a tiny little bit, what end wokeness is saying there isn't remotely true. And you're not gonna need to depend on a godless communist like me. Republican secretaries of state are making clear that there's nothing to this theory. Before we continue with the story, we depend on members to keep on going. Don't wait, click join now on YouTube. To be clear, here is what end wokeness is saying is going on. So if you focus on Arizona, Texas, and Pennsylvania, you have sort of a mix of swing states and a state that like theoretically the Democrats want to be in play but hasn't really been. You have a ton of people who are registering without photo ID. 1.25 billion in Texas, that is a very large number of people. Pennsylvania, more than a half million. Arizona, a quarter million. That is a huge sum of people. It's Fictional, it's not true remotely, but if it was true, that would be extremely concerning. And allow, I'm gonna allow a Republican to make clear how ridiculous this tweet is. This is Stephen Richer, the Republican Maricopa County recorder, who responded to this theory in way too much detail. But what they're saying is, is that the numbers are not clear, are not anywhere like what they're saying here. So in Arizona, the number of new voters that have registered in 2024 is 60,000. In fact, Arizona's overall voter rolls are lower than they were in the last election. So end wokeness claims that 220,000 people have registered without voter ID, a small subset of the total number that have registered when the total number that have registered is a tiny fraction of that number. It's not based on literally anything. And so that's for Arizona there. And again, it's a Republican that's saying that. And it, they also make clear that the claim that they're registering without photo ID is being made to make you think that we don't know who they are or that, oh my God, there's this tricky pasicky way where an undocumented migrant can get a social security number for a temporary work permit and they can use that to register to vote, which means the undocumented are voting. That's not true either. That's not how the system works literally at all. The numbers are made up, the process is made up, and wokeness also is made up, by the way. It's a, it's a, Repub it's a, a, a Russian disinformation op. Uh, but anyway, it's not true. And uh, the Republican Secretary of State of Texas, Jane Nelson, also released a statement disproving that the lie. And in this, if we bring it up, there's also a theory as to where potentially that 1.2 million figure came from. But what's important is it did not come from new registrants. And it certainly didn't come from people registering to vote without any kind of ID. It's just made up. And look, I like that the Republican Secretary of State is like trying to come up with a plausible reason. And Wilk just doesn't care. And wokeness would pull it entirely out of their fictional digital ass if they wanted to. Because it's not about shedding light on a process that could lend in security to the election. It's about ginning up outrage, vague outrage, cumulative outrage. You tell people every day there's something suspicious going on over there, here, something suspicious. And over time, what you get is tens of millions of Americans who on a fundamental level, on a level that they cannot express, certainly not without, not with specifics, that something is suspicious. And you don't do that just vaguely to get people to turn against democracy. You do it in anticipation of something. And what end wokeness is doing there, and what every time somebody like end wokeness or Elon Musk is doing, is they're saying, we don't think that Trump is going to win. So 
How about a plan B? And for plan B, what you need is a lot of people to buy into plan B. And so this is what they're doing there once again in the same way that they were doing it in 2020. And to a lesser extent in 2022, they are trying to lay the groundwork for people to not trust what happens in the election and to potentially sign up for whatever comes after that. Now, and wokeness, you can't expect to know better. And wokeness is a propaganda campaign. For Elon Musk, theoretically, people say that he's a genius. You would think that maybe he would be aware of this. And perhaps he is actually, perhaps he is a willing party to this. But take a look at this. He is the owner of the platform where a verified member is spreading baseless, already refuted election conspiracy theories to destroy people's faith in democracy. And rather than actually policing that, fact checking that, like imagine if Elon Musk responded by retweeting what those Republican secretaries of state said in Texas and Arizona. What a strong signal of support for democracy, support of the truth. Instead, what you get is just, yeah, extremely concerning. You know, I'm not gonna look into it all. I don't care fundamentally. I want you, right wing grifter, to love me. I need you to love me. And that's what we get out of Elon Musk. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.